Happy Thursday to you, everyone. Every now and then, as we go down these trails here, Captain will go head out ahead of me. I didn't call you, buddy. But he'll go out ahead of me. And he'll go around one of these curves that you see up ahead here. And many times, he'll wait until I get around the curve to catch up to him. And sometimes I'll call him back to me. But imagine what would happen if Captain took off right now and went around that curve and suddenly didn't come back. What would happen then? Yeah, it's a little bit of a scary thought. It happens to hundreds of dog owners every single year. Yeah, they go for a hike with their dog and they kind of navigate these little twisting, winding trails. And suddenly their dog goes around the curve. It doesn't come back. It's gone. So what are you going to do when that happens? Well, are you prepared for that moment when that happens? You know, imagine out here right now. Look at all the snow that's on the ground. I'll try and hold this thing up a little bit more. Kind of turn the camera around here real quick. And let you guys see this area here. It's cold this morning. It's very cold. It's down in the low 20s. Some of the snow's melted from the other day, but it's still very cold. So now imagine what would happen if Captain suddenly disappeared. And this does happen. They go around the corners. They get distracted by things, chewing on things like Captain's doing right here. He's finding something on the ground. Decides it's pretty delicious to chew on. Let's get going, buddy. And next thing you know, they don't realize where they are. They suddenly become lost. And because it's a new area and they don't have latent learning, meaning they've been there before, they know the path, they know how to get home, they can find themselves lost. So what are you going to do about that? How are you going to try and recover your dog? Because only a fraction of the dogs, according to Humane Society, are recovered every single year under very scenarios similar to this. The dogs go off the hike and they're gone, baby. They're gone. And no one can find them. So what are some things that you can do to make sure that you get your dog back? One, make sure your dog has a good microchip in it. Yeah, but I'm telling you what, that's not enough. You can't just go sticking a microchip in your dog. You got to make sure you register that microchip. And then on top of that, you have to make sure that every time you move, every time you update your phone number, your email, that you contact them and update those files. Man, it was so disappointing at my veterinary hospital when all these dogs would come in because the shelter was right across the street. They'd always bring us these stray dogs and have us give them a little health check on them, give them try to give them up to speed on their vaccinations and what have you. And we would invariably run a microchip scanner over them and find the microchip. It was there. But then we contact the registry company or organization. There was no record of the owner. They had never registered. And in other times, we did find out there was an owner. But we couldn't contact them because they had not bothered to update their information. And when that happens, you really just feel sad at that moment because you're thinking, man, there's probably an owner out there looking for their dog, but they don't know where their dog is. And we could, we could reunite them, but we don't have the information that we need to reunite them. Another thing to think about for your dog is having an ID collar on it. Put a collar on our vest and make sure, again, you have information on it. Hey, then maybe the name of the dog, but more importantly, your name and your address, and contact information. Gosh, so many times nowadays, people are so worried about privacy. They don't want their name on anything out there anymore. But I'm telling you what, it can be vital in relocating your dog. Absolutely. So make sure that you have that up to speed. Put it on there. Another thing that you can do is put Swiss bells on your dog. Yeah, Captain goes around this corner. You can hear those bells in this mountain, guarantee you, a good mile away. No doubt, a mile away. Not only that, but they kind of alert bears that you're coming. And the bears don't like the sound of those bells. And you can get them in different configurations, sizes, weights, and also they all sound different. Every single one, they're all handmade, so they sound different. You can put them on three or four dogs and know which dog's over here, which one's back there in the back of the trail, which one's over here. You would know that. So that's a good thing to have to help you just kind of track your dog down if it gets away from you. Or if it's starting to move off a little bit too far. From your location another thing that you can do is buy a gps for your dog the garmin makes what's called the alpha 100 this thing is bad to the bone i am telling you what if i had a dog that was at least a bit worried it's going to run off from me get lost chase something man that's what would be on my dog if i was up here in these mountains those things can see your dog and track your dog up to nine miles away and it gives a location about every an update location about every two and a half seconds and you can hook up to 20 dogs on the same system 
Yeah, so now imagine that peace of mind. You're walking your dogs out here, and next thing you know, you go, wait a minute, uh, excuse me, where the heck's Captain? I'm like, where, where'd he go? Where's the cow dog? Oh, okay, well, now I just look down my little GPS and go, okay, he's right over there about 100 yards from here. Man, they are dynamite, and they got such long antennas. They were built for these conditions. They were built for the snow. They were built to fall down. You step on them, roll down a hill, drop in a creek. Man, they, check it out. The Garmin 100, nine miles away. Now, you can get them for a lot lesser distance, four miles away, one mile away. It's really up to you. You, you got to determine that from your own dog. You got one of these... German short hair pointers or Vesla or setters, I am telling you, they can cover ground in no time. You'd be amazed how fast they can cover nine miles. So that's a, to me, that's, that's a no brainer. If you are new to hiking, your dog's new to hiking, never been on a trail before, and that trail is very remote, I would definitely think about having that of all the equipment. Another thing to have, thunder whistle. Oh man. When you fire it off, give the person next to you a little bit of warning. Those things are extremely loud, and that's why they're called thunder whistles. Notice I didn't say whisper whistle. Oh, no. T play with that with your dog. Have your dog like out in the field before you ever go hiking or camping with your dog. And just blow that whistle around them and toss a ball in the air. Play with them. First of all, get them used to the whistle so they don't become afraid of the whistle. Because imagine you have two dogs. One went around the curve. The other one's still standing right here. And you go fire that thing off for the very first time ever, I am telling you what, that dog will not appreciate that. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, I've been there, done it, seen it, got the t-shirt to prove it and everything. I do not do that. Get them used to it first before you go out on the trails, play with your dog, and you don't have to actually use it to teach the dog to come when called. Just kind of know this. When your dog becomes lost, it's looking for you. Yeah, you're not just looking for it. It's trying to find you. Man, you, you're the breadwinner. You got the food. You've got my shelter. I need to find you. I'm lost. And a lot of people don't think about that. Their dogs are actually looking for them. Throw that whistle up in the air. I mean, tell you what, send that thing out there, shrill it loud, man, like there's no tomorrow. And when they hear that, with well, their great, great hearing capability Man, they're going to go, hell, my God, thank God. There's Brian. He's back over there somewhere. I'm heading that way. I'm heading that way. And just keep, just keep firing it off. You know, don't let it give up on it. You just got to keep it going and keep moving in the general direction that you believe your dog is in. So, guys, those are just a few tips. You know, another thing to have is make sure you've got good training. You know, cow dogs that go there. So, if I call him, let me just turn the camera around here. There he comes. All right, cow dog. Good boy. Yeah, he'll run out ahead of me. There he goes. And also, if he goes a little bit too far, I'll let him get down the trail. So, tail dog, out of boy, buddy, you the man, you the man. Look at him stamping around. That's why I call that stamping stuff there. That's what he does. He just stamps around all over the place. There he is, tail dog. Oh yeah, that's my man. That's my man. That's my boy. That's my boy. Smile for the camera, there, buddy. Good deal. Good deal. So you know, training never hurts. Throw in a little bit of training there. Make sure you got a good recall. Sometimes just don't let your dog get so far ahead of you. You got to know your dog's capabilities. You got to know your training capabilities. But in case all of those fail, there's nothing like a good backup plan. Because I certainly did that with Captain. I had many backups. But now again, like I said, he'll be six in April. He's pretty darn trustworthy. I'm not worried about him. If he sees a deer, he goes the opposite direction. In fact, I'll post a a picture of him when he saw deer up on the top of the hill. He went, uh, okay, uh, I think I'll back up a little bit back towards Brian. So I don't have to worry about him chasing anything. He just doesn't have that in him. But he loves to frolic around out here in the woods and walk down these trails. And I just don't have, don't have to worry too much about him getting out ahead of me. He'll always stop and wait and have this little attitude or this little look on his face like, uh, can you hurry up, man? Like, can you pick up the pace just a little bit here, buddy? Come on, let's get going. It's a long trail. We got to get going here. Not just out trying to enjoy the walk, but again, he, he got business at hand. Okay, guys, well, I have more business at hand, so I got to get going myself here. But think about all those things. Microchip, get it updated, get your registration, file the registration. We never filed the darn registration for the warranties or anything, but you filed the registration for this one for sure. Make sure that when you move, you change your phone number, your email, you update that system.
Think about getting a GPS for your dog. Man, there's many of them out there. Maybe put it on your on your Santa Claus list for this year. Maybe Santa Claus will bring you one for your dogs. Can't recommend them enough, especially the ones that are made for the mountains, made for outdoors. If you love hiking, get one for your dog. Some of them come with a remote training collar capability on them. If you don't want to use that part, don't. Just use the GPS. I'm telling you, they work like a champ. Think about a thunder whistle as a backup. Easy to carry around. Don't have to plug it in. Don't have to recharge. It's got blow in it. Really good tool. And always think about an ID collar on your dog or an ID vest. Have something that will tell people who you belong to so you can be reunited with your dog. Okay, guys, we're out of here. Beautiful day up here. I got work to do, so I'm going to make this little hike a real short one today. Hash, I was out here just trying to find a darn signal, but thank God I found it. I think it's still working. Okay, guys, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll be checking in with you tomorrow. I'm Gal Dog. Head on up the hill, buddy. Okay. Now I better turn it off because now you're going to start hearing me breathe a little hard as we start climbing up this darn thing. All right, guys. Been awesome. I'm out of here. Bye.